Continuing on with Photoshop Chapter 2, this is Part C. We are on page 45 and we're going to be applying the Content Aware Patch. In the Tools panel, select the Patch tool. It's underneath the spot healing brush that we were using before. And click on, on that and get the pop-up and select the Patch tool. Your Patch tool is probably going to come up with Normal. We are going to use the Content Aware on the patch and we want to uh, use a four for the structure that structure slider allows us to control how closely the, the patch that we make reflects the existing image patterns one is the loosest adherence seventh is completely uh, very strict and so we are going to um, actually go with somewhere in between. Now, on this exercise, we are actually going to want to take the little boy out of this picture. So I might need to zoom out just a tad bit from this so that I can see all of him. And I am going to use the patch tool to drag around the boy and his shadow. You want to get in as close as you possibly can so we want to stay pretty close in on him and just pick all of him up because we want to take him out of the image. Make sure that you include everything, however. You don't want to leave an artifact dangling there. And there's our selection. Let me see if I can actually, yes, I want to take this a little bit closer. I'm holding down my Alt key, which will give me a, a deselect on my selection tool. And so there is my item selected. And what I need to do next is to just drag the patch tool to the left. So let me click and drag. And as I drag to the left, you can see that I am replacing him and we want to try and pick up the road, the bridge, and try and get, a, get this as close as possible to make that patch complete. Is it 100% perfect? We really want to match that bridge up. We don't want to pick up the, little, the, the, the lady that at all. We don't want her arm. But as soon as we can get pretty close to that, there we go. And the boy is gone. There is a section of the bridge. There's the section of the wall. It's not 100% perfect. Look at this. This didn't line up here. But we're going to deselect. If you hit your Control D, it will deselect. It's short. Uh, it's the shortcut keys for deselect. Control D. Okay. It's not perfect, but we're going to do some more repair work. So the next we're going to use the clone stamp tool. So we're going to go here, which is the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool copies areas. What we're going to do next is pick that up and select a 60 pixel brush with a 30% hardness. So let's go and change our brush to give it a 30% hardness, which means a relatively soft brush. What that means is that it's going to have a fuzziness to it. And the size, again, up to 60 pixels or close. And you want to make sure that the aligned option is also selected. So we have our brush, mode is normal, and there is a line to make sure that that is clicked on. Move the clone stamp tool to an area where the top of the bridge wall is smooth. That's the part we want to copy to smooth out the area that was patched. So we're going to pick up, we can pick up this area right here and I'll click to start sampling a part of the image. We're going to sample up on the bridge, a smooth spot of the bridge wall, and you just you'll you'll get that little target, and click with your Alt key, and you can then start to paste in 
the smooth wall to, to paste that over and clean that area up. Each time you click with the clone stamp tool, it begins again with a new source point in the same relationship to the tool as the first stroke you made. If you begin painting further right, it samples from stone that is further right than the original source point. That's because aligned is selected in the option bar. Now you're going to deselect aligned if you want to start from the same source point each time. So we could click off the aligned and you can see you're going to have that same spot that I started with is selected and it would go in wherever I wanted to paint or to paint. Without it, I'm picking up, you can see I'm selecting different sections and I'm going down in a straight line from uh, where I originally started. I'm going to actually click and pick up then anything that was not uh, aligned right. I can act, go in down here and clean this edge up. We want to pick a place where it is even. So if I picked this spot and I hit my Alt key, let me line this up a little better, and then I can come in and I can paint in and I can repair the wall like that. We can go pick up a smaller brush size so I'll take my brush down a little bit and turn off aligned. And I want to select a source point over the windows in the low row of the building that we patched because this doesn't, this doesn't work. So we're going to pick up this section here and I want to go all the way over to the edge and click to select that. And I can then paste in and bring in, oh, I went down too low there, didn't I? So let me undo that. If I paste from here, let me click and pick up this section, and I can then come in and I can repair this section of the building and cover up to that part of the wall and I can go in here and I can repair this part of the building. And I actually probably messed that up just a hair. Let me put this back in. And there it looks a little, little more like it should look. Is it perfect? No. If I really wanted to spend a lot of time on this, I can make that much more accurate. I can get all those little little uh, bumps on the, the fence in there and make everything a little bit cleaner. It's more time, but we can do a, you can actually do a much cleaner job. Anything else that looks like it needs to be replaced, repaired, uh, we can still go back in and we can still do that. We can go in this part of the wall and maybe pick up here and blend this a little bit better. The repairs you make are going to be up to you. It just depends on how much time you want to spend on it and how well you like what you're coming up with. There, I think I like that I'll repair a little bit better. I think that looks a little bit nicer. What I don't care for right here is I don't care for the repeat of that crack. So I'm going to take that out just by doing that. And I think I want to get rid of this line here as well. So I can come in and I can clone in this section. And maybe I'll clone right here. Of that. I can clone there. And I think that looks a little better because I don't like the repeats that I had in there. 
Another section we might want to patch up, let me slide this over, is this piece here because that looks a little odd. So I can come in here and pick up a section to the side of that mark in the wall and I can pull in and clone over that so that I don't have that botched up uh, indent that was in there. So I've got that cleaned up and I think that looks a little bit better. Something else you want to do when retouching a photo is to sharpen the image. Now there are several ways to sharpen an image in Photoshop, but the Smart Sharpen filter will give you the most amount of control. Sharpening can emphasize artifacts and we want to remove those first. So first of all, before we do the sharpening, we are going to zoom in on the boy's back and you can see all of those, oh, let me get rid of my, that, uh, um, that brush that I had. You can see the blue spots in there. We are going to get rid of that by using the filter for noise, dust, and scratches. The default setting is a radius of one pixel and the threshold is zero. But look at what this has done and we can actually move this up. I can take the threshold to a, out a few points and you'll start to see some of those artifacts coming back and we would like to minimize those so you could actually take your threshold up above zero maybe if you wanted to to pull it up just to here um, I've got I'm going to leave mine actually at, at uh, three instead of zero and I will say okay to that the threshold value determines how dissimilar the pixels should be before they're eliminated and the radius determines the size of the area uh, to look for dissimilar pixels. The default values are good for tiny dots and now that we've gotten rid of those artifacts you see how much cleaner this looks and we are going to next go to filter, sharpen, and select smart sharpen. In the Smart Sharpen dialog box, make sure that preview is on so you can watch the changes happen in the rest of the picture. So you can drag around to see different sections of the image. You can zoom in on this. Okay. And we want to use uh, the lens blur in Remove. You have lens blur, Gaussian, or Motion. Lens blur is finer sharpening for your detail and it reduces sharpening halos. Now we're going to drag the amount slider up top down. 200% is too much. Look at how weird that's kind of looking on there. We're going to pull that down to about 60%. Not too far. and the radius slider we're going to pull up just a little bit to 1.5 pixels so one, one pixel and a half just about the radius determines the number of pixels surrounding the edge pixels that are going to be affected the higher the resolution the higher the radius setting should be now use your own judgment when you're satisfied with this you can say okay save your image afterwards and after you save make sure that you save out again as a Photoshop PDF for turning in to me okay print quality press quality rather, save PDF.